Thank you, everyone. I'm so underwhelmed. Um, so, uh, good afternoon, Edinburgh. Are we well? Yes! <laughs> I'm good too, thanks for asking. Uh, so, uh, my name is Matt Holmes, I'm from Cornwall, uh, which means it's one of two things. It means, uh, firstly, uh, in certain lights, I'd probably have sex with my sister. <laughs> and, uh, and two, I've only just found out about Heelys! Yeah! Some Heely fans in the audience! Uh, yeah, we've only just got them in Cornwall, but I really, I really, really wish I'd brought a pair to Edinburgh, because it would make every hill worthwhile. Climb up the hill, just to wheel down again! <laughs> Screw you, suckers! I've got roller skates in my shoes! Yeah! Uh, yeah, I've also been told that I look like a, uh, a version of Hugh Grant after he's had a stroke. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mum. Um, yeah, so uh, I just want to tell you something about myself, a little, a little, a little story. Uh, but before I tell you, you need to know that I, I never ever go to the doctors. Because I've got this thing, there's a bit of, a bit of fear about doctors. Not because I've, uh, I'm sort of some big macho man with my big ego. Uh, I'm wearing a Mr. Men top, obviously. Uh, no, but I've got a fear that... When I go to the doctors, they're going to want to stick something up, up my bum, like a, a camera, or, or, or get me to like poo, poo in a cup. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and these are things I'm only comfortable doing, you know, uh, in front of my girlfriend, or my sister, obviously. Uh, that's right, it's a callback! Uh, so, um, so uh, a couple of months ago now, I had a, uh, I had a really sore throat, and it was bugging me, I had it for a, I had it for a good couple of weeks. And uh, it was getting in the way of everything I did. Every, every time I ate or I spoke or I gave head, I, uh, I just found this, this grating pain in the back of my throat. So I, eventually I had to go to the doctors because I didn't know what to do about it. So I uh, went to the doctors, spoke to the lady, gave my name at the front, of the, uh, front desk, and then looked around. And realised that finding a seat at a doctor's surgery is like playing a really dull game of Russian roulette. <laughs> yeah, if I don't laugh, it's fine. Uh, so if you, you finally find a seat and you go, I'm here with a sore throat, but I could be leaving with syphilis, <laughs> depending on what you do at the doctors. Uh, anyway, yeah, so it was quite boring being at the doctors, so I, uh, I found my seat, and I decided to invent a game, which I call Doctor Waking Room Bingo. And it works thus. You, you, you bet on who you think is going to be next to see you, based on who you think was the illest and how long they've been there for. Now, obviously, to begin with, I was doing pretty poorly. I was losing against myself. All right, Doctor Bingo. But after five minutes... It's like, good. I got, I got one right. I got two right. I got three. I got four people right in a row. If anyone's played Dr. Bingo, they know it's a very good score. Um, and until, until finally, they went, uh, Matthew Holmes, Matthew Holmes. And I was sitting there, I was like, I'm not going to get up for a second in case anyone else is playing the game. <laughs> they're going to have a, they're going to shit themselves. I was still there. I went, yes, it's me, everyone. <laughs> because everyone's like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> Matthew Holmes, I just said, just said. Um, and then of course I realised I'm just like a tit. So, uh, and the, ner- the nerves, the nerves came back to me really quickly about the, about the, whole, the, the whole thing. So I, I started treading, so to the doctors. And I just, my mood was, do, 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 And that was some funny looks. Um, <laughs> And uh, I finally got into the doctor's surgery, the uh, doctor waiter and thing, and uh, the doctor said, uh, so, uh, how are you? I said, is that a trick question? <laughs> uh, she said, so, so what's wrong with you? I, I explained my sore throat. And she said, so, what do you think is wrong with you? I was like, look lady, I thought with your eight years of medical training, you'd be slightly better placed to guess at this than I could. Of course, that's not what I actually said. What I actually said was, uh, I'm sorry, I have no idea, I have no idea what's wrong with you. Um, and uh, she said, well, it's probably just a viral thing. It's probably just a viral thing, that's the way it works. Um, it actually put a lot of other symptoms going on. She said, have you, have you, have you, you know, pooed recently? And immediately, immediately, this was an avenue I was not happy with going. I was like, no, p- p- but I don't poo. Um, she said, you don't poo? I said, no, I poo, I poo, I poo the normal amount. The, the, the regular amount of pooing, that's what I do. So I did. She goes, well, when was the last time you went? I said, I don't know, days ago, a few days ago, a few days ago. She said, you sound like you're quite badly compacted. Maybe you should jump up on the little bed, and I can check you out. So a minute later, I was lying on the bed, with my boxes down by my knees and my head in my hands. <laughs> and if, if no one's ever put their finger up your bum, it feels a lot like someone putting a finger up your bum. <laughs> so 
So she did it. It was, yeah, as it was. And she came out and she said, Good news! I was like, There is no good news in this situation. Either you just had your finger up my bum for a minute for no reason, or I felt prostate cancer. Not some sufferers in the room, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, she said, she said No, I, it was all fine, but I didn't know as well down there. There was a little bit of anal tearing. <laughs> Ooh, yes! Have you suffered from anal tearing, madam? I'm going to tell you from all my. Sorry? So you didn't understand that. I would tell you it was my mum. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> mum, have you ever had anal tearing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, mum will know that uh, there's three good causes of uh, anal tearing. One is hemorrhoids, two is straining too hard, and three, my doctor told me, three is insertion of foreign objects. That's right. So I, uh, I left the doctor that day with, uh, with no dignity, no, no medicine, no prescription, and no advice other than make sure to th th thoroughly lube up before you anally pleasure yourself. And, uh, and that's the big problem I've got. Uh, not angrily pleasuring myself, obviously, uh, but uh, I, I find myself getting in awkward situations because I just felt like I'm a very awkward man. And I don't, I don't want to be awkward. I, I just want to be normal. I don't want to be cool. I just want to be normal. And so I, I just dress like everyone else. I, I live in my jeans. You know, just dress like everyone else does. But there's one group of people who have taken dressing like each other to the extreme, and that is Muslim women. <laughs> Not the Muslims in the room. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, because they, they, all, they all go in the red and the black burqa. But it must be good in some respects because I imagine when you're planning a night out, you'll be like, uh, what, what, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? Oh, I was thinking, uh, the black burger, black burger. Oh, yeah, good idea, good idea. It's a good thing you said that because I've got, fuck all out of my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was, I was trying to explain to my girlfriend the other day that I think how, being able to wear a burger would be a good, good thing in certain circumstances because you could, you could hide all your physical insecurities, which would be something. Uh, but she said, of course, man, it, it, it wouldn't work for you, would it? I thought, what do you mean about you? She because you've got that, that freaky eye, haven't you? <laughs> so I'm like, girlfriend, freaky eye? I've got a lazy eye, I have, you know. Although, of course, she was right. If I, uh, if I ever did wear a burqa, it doesn't cover the eyes, does it? I'd be walking down the street, there'd be some little kid like, Mummy, 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 why is that slightly butch woman staring at us? <laughs> like, I don't know, it's probably a terrorist, just run, Johnny, run! And I'd be like, no, 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 it's not me. But I'd, be, I'd have my Heelys on, so I'd be gliding towards them, the burka billowing out behind me, like a Dementor from Harry Potter. Woo! And she'd turn around, she'd be like, expecto patronum! And I'd be like, oh, she got my reference, how great! And then, and then, and then the spell would hit me, and collide with my chest, and the, the whole world in which this joke is encased would collide and collapse like an Ikea wardrobe. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. You've been a lovely audience. Uh, I've been at Holmes. Good night. Thank you very much. <laughs>